looking deep down the left side. Mendeville in the end zone. Touchdown! Down the sideline, still falling, falling, falling to the house. And the Warriors streaming from the sideline to celebrate with 17 seconds left. Hey, and welcome everybody into B Varsity Live at the downtown Bakersfield Californian Studios. Yeah, I'm Trevor. This is not Zach. Zach, well, he's mending right now. He's a little ill, so he's under the weather. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go solo today. But we got a big show. First up, we've got Nick Papagni, better known as the Pag Meter, from the Fresno area. We're gonna talk basketball and playoff seedings and implications as we're about two and a half weeks away from the playoffs. And then in the second segment, we have Casey Quinn, the new football coach at McFarland in studio with McFarland Athletic Director Justin Derrick. Talk about the move for Quinn from Clovis North to McFarland, what it means for the campus in North Kern County. And in the third segment, we have boys soccer team from Bakersfield High, Archie Parks, and his players will come in, and we'll talk about how the Drillers are doing so far undefeated still in the Southwest Yosemite League, and then we'll go over more wrestling and kind of soccer full board later in the final segment. So, Nick, let's go ahead and bring you in now, the PAG meter himself. Nick, how are you today? Fantastic, <laughs> Trevor Boy. How are you guys doing down there? Uh, you know, I'm doing well. We'll uh, – We'll check on Zach in a little bit. He had a little bit of a migraine, so hopefully that guy is resting it off right now. We all know how those things go. They, uh, they'll they debilitate you in a second. So, um, Nick, we had a uh, we had an upset in the uh, track and boys basketball this week that kind of upset the apple cart much in the same way that the apple cart was upset two weeks ago. So let's talk about that for just a second, and let's start with Division One. Uh, Clovis North, obviously, they came in ranked number one. We had them number one. Uh, now over the last two weeks because they had beaten then number one Clovis West and then the Central Grizzlies came in and beat them on Tuesday night. So for you, what does that mean for you up there? Well, it, it means to me that this is the strangest year and probably the most exciting year where anybody can beat anybody. I put Clovis West back up number one this morning. They have some bigger wins. They beat Ridgeview, Bakersfield, Central, so, you know, it, it's just going to – anybody could beat anybody. So, uh, I, I, this is going to be great, though, Trevor. I, I loved it. But Division One is so wide open, it's amazing. And uh, I'm real excited to see how Liberty ends up because I think that could be the team to get to sell in the arena, the first South – Valley team to get to Sun Arena. They're very fun to watch. They are very fun to f- watch, but the other team that we got to look out for is the team that's hosting them tonight, and that's Bakersfield. Both teams undefeated. BHS four and zero. Liberty's three and zero in the SWIL. The reason that Liberty's only played three games is because they couldn't play this week um, because of wrestling that's going on. Uh, they'll play. They will host Centennial. At- 12.30 on Saturday. That'll be their fifth game. So tonight's matchup at BHS is big because when you think about Ronnie Stapp is finally getting back into form for them, and they've got some great players around him. Taj Wright, Shane Jones, Jeremiah Dickerson, R.J. Banks. You go down the list, that BHS team is very good, but Liberty, a team led by Anais Madrano, who um, – Nick, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, two years ago we did this story – here at the Californian, on five super sophomores. Justin McCall, Jordan Roberts, Austin Contreras, Alec Check, Anais Madrano. You know what all those guys are doing now in their senior years? They're having fabulous years. They're all averaging over 20 points a game individually. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing. So you look at all those teams. So Liberty's got Anais Madrano, and then they got a super sophomore themselves and Isaiah Hill. So this is a team that can shoot the ball, um, with the Clement brothers back, the whole narrative that they don't have a player over six foot is kind of gone. But when you look at that team, that's exactly what they are under first-year head coach Jeff Hicks, who, um, for those of you who don't know, is the son of former Liberty coach Andy Hicks and was an assistant for A.J. Sharon for years, who A.J. is now an assistant over at uh, Fresno Pacific. But you look at that team, and they're so, they're so small, but they play good defense – they run the dribble well, and they can all shoot. So that's the biggest thing. That's why it makes them so fun. So tonight will be a big matchup. When you look at it, I think the only way that a Liberty or a BHS gets the number one seed is if Clovis West loses a couple games in league. And Other than that, I think if Clovis West goes 8-2, and 9-1 and one in the track, they've got the number one seed 
kind of um, as long as they beat Clovis North the second time around, they've got that number one C kind of shored up, right? Yeah, I would say if Clovis West beats Clovis North next time, they're definitely going to be the number one seed uh, because they have beaten Liberty and Bakersfield already, and that means they would have beaten uh, Central and Clovis North. Right. The number two seed, I think it goes to the Southwest. I don't know I do if anyone else in the, in the track have done enough damage. Central, you know, uh, they did beat Liberty, but they haven't done enough damage either. So I think they'll go... Uh, south, or I'm sorry, track, and then Southwest Yosemite, and then from there. Right, because you look at a team like Edison, who's four and zero in the CMAC, and it's the CMAC that has a Madera South that's the D four team. Sam Joaquin Memorial, who's probably number two seed in D two, and Sanger a D three team, along with Bowler. They're undefeated right now, but they still have losses. When you look at it, Clovis West, Clovis East, Bowler, Sam Joaquin Memorial, and twice to Liberty. No way that they, even if they go ten and zero in the uh, CMAC, that Edison could go over BHS or Liberty at any point. So you got to figure that they, at best, I think that Edison, even at going 10 0 in the CMAC, fifth seed at best, do you think? Oh, yeah. I've got them in, in Division One. I. I've got Edison number six right now. So they're not even going to be close. Yeah. Right now, I got Clovis West one, Bakersfield two. It depends on the night. Central three, Liberty four. I always go head to head is always big. So Central three because they beat Liberty. But, uh, you know, we got a long way to go. We do have a long way to go, and it'll be really kind of interesting to see that. But I think it is really a two-headed race on the Southwest Yosemite League. And then I think the track in itself is probably a three-team race at this point. And Buchanan maybe can get an upset here or there to make it interesting, right? Oh, no question. Yep. I, yeah, I think Central is a team to watch out for. They're, if they're ever going to be disciplined, they could knock off anybody. But you never know who's going to show up on that team. All right, let's talk about the Biggie for a second. Let's move over to girls' basketball. Give us a little more insight for us down here in Bakersfield and Kern County on just how good this Clovis West team is. Um, I do want to put a little caveat out there. No time in the history of the CIF running a Division I or Open Division state championship has a team from the Central Section ever played boys or girls in a state title game. Is that going to change this year? No, I don't. This, this, they're doing something that will never, and I'll repeat, never happen again in the history of our valley. They're competing against the professional private high schools around the United States. And this is why, you know, as as a team, they're fabulous. You look at them before a game, they'll say, "Are you kidding me? This is that's the team that's beating everybody." But they play so hard. Uh, Craig Campbell's got the system down, and he, they just wear you down. They can shoot threes. They can play great defense. But they'll never. I don't care who it is. It'll never happen again in our Valley. But, yes, they are great to watch. And the question is, who's going to play them at Selling Arena? That's the only thing I could see. And how much do you have to spot them to make it a competitive game at Selling Arena? Well, I mean, Central play, play them down with the wire. Now, if you're big and or if you're tall and quick, you can compete with Clovis West. If you're small and quick, you got no chance. But they have problems. That's their kryptonite. Being tall and being quick and handling the basketball, you can do well against them. I'm not saying you're going to beat them, but you can hang in there. If if they get it going, don't you, it, it's just they will knock you out early. And Central is big. They've got the sophomore. Remind me her name. The uh, transfer from Edison. Yeah, I, I'll find her name for you. But yeah, she's uh, she's good. She's and then they got the other four, good. the other junior in there that's about six two. So you got two bigs in there for Central. We saw them a couple weeks ago when uh, you know they trailed Ridgey for most of the game before uh, their young senior point guard hit the three from the corner to take the lead with about a minute five left and beat the Wolfpack. Um, tonight's matchup, I. I kind of consider tonight's matchup between Clovis West and Clovis the one-two matchup in Division One. Um, as good as Stockdale and Ridgeview have been, I don't think either of them could upset Clovis for the number two seed. So it looks like you're going to have two track teams as the one and two seed um, in the girls division. As if the if the season ended today, correct, Nick? Yeah, they, they'll play tomorrow night at Clovis West. That's and right. Clovis I'm sorry. North tomorrow is night. another team. Clovis North is a very good team as well. They got three freshmen and two sophomores starting. Uh, they they are awfully good, and they they play Clovis and Central down on the wire, so they get another shot at both of those. They're they're, they're going to battle for that number two seed as well. Uh, in terms of Ridgeview, when you look at them, a big doubleheader tomorrow night. Girls undefeated. All four of these teams are actually undefeated in league going into tomorrow night's doubleheader. Girls varsity game is a uh, five fifteen. Both of these games 
at Ridgeview against Independence, and then the boys game wow. is scheduled for 6.30, so that'll be a lot of fun. When you look at them in our B-Varsity rankings, we have all four of those teams in the top ten, so it'll be a lot of fun to see how that kind of – uh, pans out. And when you look at Division Two, um, I really do think when in terms of independence uh, and Bakersfield, that is two teams that are undefeated in their leagues down here in Kern County, that the matchup last year in selling for the D2 title is going to likely be the rematch again unless something happens. Those are the two favorites in D2 on the girls' side. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. M- Menachie's probably an outside uh, chance. Uh, they're very up and down, but they have some big wins. Selma and Redwood, they're, they're as well, but I think you're right. It's going to be Indy and Bakersfield. They're the favorites in Division Two, uh, Especially since Ridgeview, uh, which has lost to Bakersfield, uh, has a loss to Menachee at the MLK Showcase at COS last yep. week. So you got to factor that head-to-head matchup in there as well. Division Two boys, I think it's Ridgeview and everybody else at this point. I like Memorial. I think Jalen Green is a great player. I think Stroud is a great wing for them. But I think right now they're showing their youth over their talent at this time, and I think the senior leadership for Ridgeview is going to keep them – as the odds-on favorite until we see them at Selland on March. That D2 final is – is that March 3rd? Yeah. That's a late game That's on March 3rd. 3rd. Yes. Yep. Friday night. Yeah, no question about it. I think you're absolutely right. Memorial so undisciplined. They play – they haven't figured out it's team basketball yet, and if they do, they'll be dangerous. But, boy, I sure like Roberts on the call. And, and Rizzi is a heavy favorite. And you're right, Independence and Memorial will battle for that two seed. Right. We got a few more minutes. D3 boys. I've got Selma as the top seed with West. Um, you got to kind of look at that loss to Independence last week and kind of take it as a grain of salt because Austin Contreras didn't play after he hurt his ankle in the final 10 seconds against Ridgeview. And I'm saying that, I'm not saying that West would have won or Independence would have won that game, but I think the outcome would have been much different with him playing healthy. Um, they had an incredible 93-22 to win over Golden Valley. Zach and I both looked at each other last night and said, is that a girls' score? Because there's nothing against girls and boys' basketball as a divide, but you see that happen more in girls' basketball at the high end versus the low end than you do at boys' basketball. It's usually a little bit more competitive than a 71-point blowout. So that West team is very fun. What do you know about Selma? Selma's awfully good. They're they're big. they got a six foot eight Stroud kid who's uh, – a dominant. They got great shooting. They're awesome at home, so they're very tough to beat at home. And I, you're right. I think Selman West are the team to beat. The uh, and don't leave out Singer as well. This team is legit. They have got superstar athletes as well. So I think Singer and then uh, Golden West, 19 and four. Chavez, 15 and one. You can't leave those guys out. And also Torrey Western. So D3 is going to be exciting at the end. And don't leave out South. Yeah, Chavez, really good team. Uh, top team in the SSL this year. Uh, D4, Emmanuel, of course, at the well, top. Madera but South the too. thing is, is that if, as well. if you're big, if you're big and Madera South has got some size, you can battle in because if you can double team Darren Pearson, person, it really kind of upsets it uh, with the rest of the offense because if you look at it, it's him and uh, Kendrick, and that's about it for them right now. You really see the loss of R.J. Horn and Colin Slater from last year. No question about it. Yeah, you know, Emmanuel's a good team, and I think Madera South is a team. And Kermit Lions are making a move as well. But it's the team. The team to beat is definitely Emmanuel. They're a big ten player, and, and we'll see if D four can step up and compete against those guys. D five, uh, Cal City, the favorite right now. But Nick, I don't know if you saw what happened earlier this week. They lost to Bishop ninety five to ninety, and probably the most incredible high desert league boys basketball score you'll see. Uh, since they moved into the central section. Yeah, I've got them going to sell in the arena as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I think the team that you got to keep, keep an eye on is Fresno Christian. They played a Division One and Division Two schedule. they got a horrible record, but they played some very tough teams and did them on purpose to get battle-tested for the playoffs. So we'll see, but I, it's – Division Division Five is going to be very interesting, very they, fun to watch. They don't still play on carpet at Fresno Christian, do they? Oh, they roll it out when they want. <laughs> no, I'm just – no, they got rid of it finally. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's run through the uh, bottom three divisions in girls basketball before we let you go. we got about 15 seconds. Mission Oak uh, and Madera, Golden Valley in there, one, two, three in Division Three. Do you agree with that? Yeah, no question yep. about it. I think San Joaquin Memorial um, – 
actually, we're skipping D4. Sierra Pacific, another team playing very well. It's them. Strathford Kerman at the top of D4. And then Bakersfield Christian in D5, just below a San Joaquin Memorial team. So two, the two Christian schools, um, you know, parochial schools, I think, are uh, probably going to meet in the D5 finals in girls D5. Yeah? Yeah, Memorial has a big injury. So I could keep an eye on Memorial. They, they, they could go down a bit. They have their big stars out right now. Yeah, and Cameron Taylor, she could score from anywhere for BCHS. So, yeah. Nick, appreciate it. Thanks for filling in today. Always love your inside up there. Uh, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, but You got it, Trevor. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thanks. you too. All right, we'll be right back with Casey Quinn, the new football coach at McFarland, and their athletic director, Justin Derrick, right after this. 